Hey dreamers, and welcome to Dreamers Unite, the talk show for dreamers. My name is Sherry Pullum, and I am your host. I am grateful always and appreciative that you have come to spend time with me today. On this show, we talk about how do we manifest our dreams? How do we take a seed of an idea and how do we put that out into the world? What are the steps? What are the actions that we need to take to do it? So we bring you lots of guests from all walks of life to share their journey and their story. So today I have Dr. Trina Wiggins. I am super proud to have her on my show. This go-getter, energetic, dynamic, doctor, mom, fitness guru, she's all that and more. Dr. Trina Wiggins is a pediatrician, wellness coach, fitness competitor who recently released her new book, KISS. Keep it short and simple for a healthy, sustainable lifestyle. She has spent over 35 years practicing medicine and wellness. She has competed in over 50 shows over the past 17 years with many top place finishes, including winning a gold medal in the Nevada State Senior Olympics. She is the president of the Stanford Club of Southern Nevada and has served as the president of the Stanford National Black Alumni Association. She's a mom of twin boys, a wife, and believe it or not, a grandmother. Trina. Welcome to Dreamers Unite. I am just thrilled and honored to have you on the show today. Thank you for taking the time. I am so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes, yes. Well, Trina, you are in such great shape. And um, anyone who looks at you can see that you have certainly taken care of your body and your mind and your spirit, your energy um, is vivacious and infectious. Once people get to know you even better after this interview, they will see. Um, so where did this, where did your journey with fitness and wellness begin? So really it began back in 1972. Um, it was a summer and I was sitting lacing my tennis shoes, getting ready to go play kickball with my friends on 63rd Street in Oakland. And when I looked up out of the corner of my eye, I saw something that really would change my life. I saw Olga Corbett, mm. um, the Russian gymnast, doing a no hand backflip on the balance beam. At that moment, I was mesmerized. And I said, I, I wanna do this sport. Cause I had never seen it before. So I yelled upstairs, mom, come down here and come look at Olga. And she was like, who is Olga? <laughs> and um, I just told her, I said, this is what I wanted to do. So I looked in the yellow pages in Oakland, but I couldn't find a gymnastics facility. So I asked my mom to drive me to the Berkeley Public Library so I can check out some yellow pages to see if I could find a gymnastics facility. So I checked out like 13 yellow pages and I found a facility in Walnut Creek, California called Diablo Gymnastics. And um, that's about 30 minutes away from Oakland. So that was really what um, started my whole fitness journey. Your father was very ill. Um, yes, my dad's illness and my mom's relentless um, efforts to, to find food as medicine for my dad. She would juice fresh juice and vegetables. She would juice wheatgrass. I mean, to buy a wheatgrass back in the early 70s was unheard of. And we even grew wheatgrass at home. So I watched her carefully and how she led her life and tried to, to help my dad by using food as medicine. And that really set the stage for who I am today. And you have been living by that I, really all of your life. Absolutely, and absolutely. Was it your dream to become a physician? Was that your dream? Yeah, so when I was in high school, um, like I said, my dad was battling this disease while I was in high school. I had the opportunity to work with a neurosurgeon and to see brain surgery and to see what his day-to-day -day activities looked like. And that piqued my interest. Um, fast forward, I went, when I went to college, I had the opportunity to have a great mentor, um, Dr. Woodrow Myers. 
um, African-American physician. He happened to be the, also the resident fellow for the African-American theme dorm at Stanford called Ujima. Um, he helped with letters of recommendations, recommend certain classes I needed to take. So he helped me navigate that path to becoming a physician. So I was like, you know, just grateful to have him in my life. And one thing I wanna mention that he always taught me, he said, Trina, you learn, you earn, and you return. Oh, so, okay. Yes, so when you're young, teenager, young adult, you're learning. And then you earn when you're in your, your middle ages. And then when you become more mature like myself, it's time to give back. It's time to return. And that's what I'm, so right now I volunteer with Volunteers in Medicine of Southern Nevada, um, taking care of those children who fall in between the cracks or parents have come on hard times and lost their insurance, whatever the reason may be. Um, it's my, to me, it's my time to give back. And I also figured that I needed to step outside of the office because in the office, you're helping people one-on-one. -on -one. And I needed to impact, you know, the society or people in a, in a great in masses. And that's one of the reasons why I wrote the book. I figured that I can get my message across to the masses of people. Yes, and we are going to talk about this book. And before I even hold up KISS, keep it short and simple for a healthy, sustainable lifestyle, I want to repeat that nugget again. Okay. You learn, you earn, and you return. Yes. Boom. Catch that nugget, dreamers. Catch that nugget. Trina. Yes. You have written... I mean, this is a workbook. Yes. This is a guide for your spiritual, physical, emotional, nutritional well-being. Yes. It's a complete guide. Kiss. Keep it short and simple for a healthy, sustainable lifestyle. Yes. So tell me more about the journey to this book. Yes. So, you know, being a pediatrician, one of my biggest pet peeves, kids don't have control of what they eat. Mm -hmm. And when I take a dietary history, I will tell you, since I've been at this clinic, 90 to 95% of my children tell me, Dr. Trina, for breakfast, they feed us a Cinnabon, and for lunch, we have cheese pizza. Wow. And I, I, I'm literally like mortified. And um, I had the opportunity to visit Finland when one of my sons was playing overseas with basketball. And I had the opportunity to see an elementary school. And it was just, they were being fed oatmeal and fruit. And I'm like, wow, what a difference. And you know, I, I educate each family one-on-one, -on -one, but I said, I need to try to start reaching greater numbers of people. How can I impact the masses? Writing a book and speaking and blogging and educating people via social media. So that's one of the reasons why, like I said, I wrote the book and I wanted to debunk the theory that chronic diseases, such as high blood pressures or diabetes, mm -hmm. are genetic. Mm -hmm. That is not the trace. There may be a small component, but you are what you eat. What you put in your body you're gonna, is what's gonna come out, right? If you put bad gas or pour oil in a car, it's gonna break down. And I try to tell you know, my patients, your body is like an army mm -hmm. and you have billions and billions of cells. Those cells are like soldiers fighting in the army to keep you well and to keep disease out. But you gotta give it the right ammunition, right? Yes. You can't just give it anything. So to educate people about that proper nutrition, that proper ammunition, and to bunk the theory that just because grandma, you know, Mary had it or uncle Joe had it, that does not mean that that's your destiny or that's your journey. And the second thing, myth, I wanted to debunk is that you don't have to put a solid nonstop hour of workout in to get fit. It can be done in small digestible pieces scattered throughout the day. So like 10 minutes, three times a day, 15 minutes, twice a day, it's cumulative and your body remembers. And that's what's, that's what's important. Those are the two things I wanted to, to get across to people. 
And another one last point I want to mention, um, the American Heart Association tells us if we do 30 minutes of walking six days a week, we can cut our chances of a heart attack in half. I mean, in half, that's 50%. That's huge. That's so huge. I just tell people small pieces woven throughout the day. And it's easy to wrap your mind around because you can see light at the end of the tunnel. It doesn't seem like a drudgery. Well, yes. I would imagine if you weren't a walker, could you ride a bike or, yes. or could you, uh, you know, stationary bike or whatever it is. Any, any activity. Exercise your heart. Yes. That gets your heart rate up. Any mm -hmm. activity is, is acceptable. And like I said, I really never have a whole solid hour. I'm busy with doing other things, but guess what? If I have 10 minutes, I'm going to do something. And if I have another 15 minutes, I'll do something. And with that, especially with people who are not keen on exercise, seeing light at the end of the tunnel is huge, especially for sustainability. And we're, you know, cause people start and stop exercise programs, you know? So if you can get it for someone to be consistently consistent and sustainable over time, that's a win-win. Right. And, and really, I think what your um, book is so wonderful or helps us do, yes. you know, and I hope you all will go out and get the book not only is it a guide, but it's a workbook. So you yes. can trace your progress. Absolutely. Because we like progress. When we have our dream and it's so big, we have to just take a bite, yes. choose that. You have to just put one foot in front of the other, take one step at a time. And I think with keeping it short and simple, yes. it really allows people to do that. And also to celebrate the win. Exactly, you celebrate the wins along the way. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, let's talk about how damaging sugar and salt can be to your body. Right, you know, salt is notorious. And as African-Americans, we have, you know, a, a high incidence of high blood pressure. So, so what really happens? Um, first of all, water is a magnet to sodium, okay? So you eat a lot of salt, right? Mm -hmm. And just think if this is, you know, my, my hand here, this is a blood vessel. You're eating the salt it's going in the blood vessel, right? Mm -hmm. Water's going to pour in there and follow it. Right. Mm -hmm. So now you have a, a lot of volume of fluid in this blood vessel. Okay. And that volume is pushing up and it's more pressure on the walls of the blood vessel, right? That pressure damages those blood vessel walls. Okay. And that pressure over time, causes the walls to become unflexible and narrows. So now when your heart beats, it has to pump harder to get blood through, mm -hmm. which can lead to um, high blood pressure and problems and with heart disease. So with saying that, you know, the FDA tells us that we should have no more than 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day, mm. okay? Mm. And for people uh, who are over 50, African-American or people who have other chronic diseases like diabetes or heart disease, they should aim for 1500 milligrams of sodium a day. Now, 1500 milligrams of sodium a day is about three quarters of a teaspoon. 2300 milligrams of sodium is about a teaspoon. The average American gets 4,500 milligrams of sodium wow. per day. Wow. Even, and that's on the low end. Some people get 5,000, 6,000. So it's wreaking havoc on yeah. our bodies. So and how do we help people get out of that pattern? How can we help people make smarter food choices? What we need to do is first of all, you've got to start cooking more at home. You know what's in your food. Restaurants, the CDC says 70% of American salt intake is because of restaurant food and prepackaged food. Okay? It's not necessarily the salt shaker that most people think it is, but it's those prepackaged and restaurant foods. Um, in my book, I talk about, you know, make yourself a sandwich. And if you take all the pieces of a sandwich, the bread, the condiments, the cheese, and the meat, that comes to a total of 2,020 milligrams of sodium. And we haven't even talked about the chips. Is sea salt, uh, Himalayan salt, are they better substitutes? Salt is salt. Okay. Okay. So okay. what I typically tell people to cook with, are like the garlic powders, the powders, because okay. they're not, they don't have the salt, the garlic powder, onion powder. And then there's a um, um, 
Lowry, not Lowry's, but um, Miss Dash, uh, Sprouts has one, Simply Organic. Mm -hmm. They have a line of salt-free seasonings that are great. And, and they're all different flavors. They have Mexican Chipotle. They have um, uh, Cajun. Um, they have all different kind of flavors, but they're salt-free. That's great advice. What about for snacks? Well, and the key thing is, 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 is looking at the, the sodium content and knowing, you know, what's low and what's not low. Mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a quick way to look at it. So when I glance at a label mm -hmm. and when they have the percent daily value, that's right. I don't, if anything is over 10%, I don't get it. Because right. 10, 10 is an easy number to look at, right? Yes. So I, okay. If everything is less than 10%, I'm pretty good. And um, the, the, the chips that we um, have with when we do homemade guacamole are July, I think it's called July's quinoa um, chips. And they have a low okay. sodium um, content. Other things, snacks you can do is, um, Obviously, the guacamole with the with the chips. You can also um, like um, broccoli and with your with your favorite. I have a great balsamic vinaigrette that I like. That's low in sodium. It's made. It's called Tessa Mays, and they have it as, um, at Sprouts, and I think they may have it at Whole Foods. But you can also order it online. You don't have to even go to those stores. Um, yeah. So to me, the the um, fruits, um, the veggies, and then those the the chips that are low in sodium. I think per, per serving, which is like 12 to 14 chips, it's like 50 milligrams of sodium. Well, you know what? That's not a bad substitute. Right. Not a bad right. substitute. And, you know, obviously if someone has to treat themselves every now and then, but like oh, be more absolutely. conscious of what you're putting into your body, I think overall too is what you're saying. Be more, read the labels. Yes. Read the label, be savvy. And you know, another good, good, um, snack or edamame, garlic edamame. You put garlic edamame. on it and it's delicious, absolutely delicious. Yes, I'm a fan of edamame, definitely. Yes. Okay, your book is laid out, it's, it's beautiful. There's pictures of you in here, um, you know, doing push-ups and training and the food is just incredibly gorgeous in here. You give recipes on yes. smoothies and recipes on and you tell all about our best practices for superfoods yes i want to talk a little bit about organic versus non-organic right so how can we and should we should we go more organic and again for some of us i mean it's expensive to buy right. organic. So, so yes or, organic is expensive and so first of all what does organic mean what so does organic, it mean? yes right so organic are, are foods grown without pesticides without genetic modifications, without ionizing radiation, uh, without synthetic um, fertilizer or sewer sludge, none of that stuff, right? And it has to be at least 95% of the ingredients has to be organic. So that means no pesticides, right? Um, but you're right, organic produce is more expensive. But a way you can get around that is there are certain fruits and vegetables that typically have low amounts of pesticides versus others. So foods with encasements like bananas, eggplant, pineapple, they have an encasement, right? So their um, pesticide levels are low as opposed to berries and apples where that pesticide leaches right through. Uh -huh. So if it's, if it's typically have a low amount of pesticides, go ahead and buy the traditional. But if you need to buy traditional and it's high in pesticides, make sure you wash your vegetables and fruit thoroughly. I typically fill up my sink and pour some vinegar. It could be regular vinegar, apple cider, with or without baking soda. And I wash it well, let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes, then I rinse thoroughly and I'm good to go. The key thing is you just don't wanna um, have pesticide in your food no. because it has been linked to cancer and other diseases, um, breast, prostate, um, you know, leukemia, lymphomas, and children are especially at risk because they have a developing immune system. So um, you just want to be cognizant of that. But like I said, the ways to get around it is just to know which ones are high in pesticide concentrations and which ones are low. And then you can, you know, go accordingly from there. Does that do anything to the flavor? Do the blueberries or the strawberries absorb? Not at all. Flavor? Just so people, you're not frightened when you hear 
vinegar, yes. right? Yeah, it doesn't, no, and like I said, once you rinse them afterwards, they're fine. Taste just like you did not rinse them with vinegar. That is wonderful. And to be able to keep our family safe and healthy. Yes. What I also love about your book, there's so many things I love about it, but you also combine some wonderful tips on just keeping our emotional state healthy, smiling yes. more even. Yes, yes. Um, it's so important, especially during these times, you cannot be glued to the television watching the news. That's going to make you sad and depressed or anxious. Um, I, I recommend maybe check it in the morning um, once and maybe in the afternoon and then put it down um, and don't have all those notifications on. And yes, you need to, um, to I, I like watching comedy. I like, I make sure I you know intentional smiling and laughing because what that does, that boosts up your happy hormones, your endorphins. Okay. And um, so it's, it's just, is it, it, laughter is the perfect medicine. It so don't is. get, don't get addicted, don't get addicted to the news. Watch a comedy show or watch a comedy movie and rev up those endorphins. Rev them up. And isn't it true that they say studies show that you can't stay angry if you smile. If you that's smile, right. you can't stay mad. Like that's right. Try it. Just try smiling. Exactly. And, and see so if you can stay angry. Right. And that's intentional. You have to be intentional about it, right? So and knowing that it's just not externally, but internally, you're internally. feeling good as well. Internally, right. Because that's really the most important thing. Because yes. how you feel on the inside even if you have the most fabulous wardrobe, even if you appear to be in the best shape of your life, yes. if you are not feeling good about yourself internally. Right. And it really shows. Not I mean, yeah. it, it really shows even when you, when I look at people's pictures, um, we're looking at pictures um, just in a magazine and you can kind of see through the eyes and see if someone is happy or not. So it really um, reflects on the inside as well. That's right. Well, as they say, the camera doesn't lie. What are some great foods that we can maintain uh, brain well-being and brain health? Right. So your and, healthy and boost, fats. And boost our memory, all of that. Yeah, healthy fats, healthy fats. So like your omega-3 fats, right? Mm -hmm. So like your, um, your wild-caught salmon, tuna, mackerel, trout. Those are all have healthy omega-3s in them, right? Um, if you don't eat fish, your nuts, like your walnuts, your almonds, then your seeds, like your flax seed, your chia seeds, hemp seeds, all those are great um, foods for the brain. Not only for the brain, but for the heart, yes. for your joints, and for good skin. So and it's nice that we have these foods that can all, you know, kill multiple birds with one stone, right? And um, it pretty much mimics the, Mediter the Mediterranean diet, which has been around for years. Yes, it has. Um, you know, and that's basically what it is. Whole, f um, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, omega-rich um, fish, and olives, olive oil. Very basic. Um, but like I said, it's, it's the best diet around. And, it's, and no longer, you know, it's been around for so many years. And no wonder. And I think it's also doable. Oh, absolutely. It's very doable. doable. And it's, it's sustainable. It's sustainable. A lot of these diets these days are not sustainable. They're temporary. And you say, oh my God, I lost this weight in a month. But then what happens when it's over? A lot of people go back to the same, you know, way of eating and get their same problems back or gain the weight or whatever. So this whole book is talking about sustainability. I can't say enough good things about um, KISS. Um, Thank you. I, I am... I'm grateful when you said, when I got, when I received the book, cause, because I, you know, ordered my book. Yes. And of course I had to have my own, you know, autographed. Version. Yes. <laughs> um, and I mentioned um, to you, Trina, that I didn't realize it was a workbook. Yes. So when I got it, because I love things that are, that you can engage and that you can write because right. I, I journal. Yes. I love the practice of journaling. And so I love to be able to keep track, write it down. Um, and you have something in here really for everyone. So if someone is looking for a pediatrician, yes, 
um, what, how, how can you uh, guide them in terms of what should they look for when they're in search of a pediatrician? Right. Well, one of the things you, with anything you, you're going to look for, you want to get a referral from yeah. someone that obviously that has used that pediatrician or knows that pediatrician. That's number one. Um, go and visit, have just a visit, just a conversation. You don't have to be seen, just make an appointment so you can conversate and see, do we click? Are we on the same wavelength? Mm. Ask the pediatrician, what are their after hour, um, what do they do when the day is over? If my kid gets sick in the middle of the night, who am I talking to? Am I talking to a nurse? Am I talking to a physician? Or does a physician handle his own call or her own call? So you want to know who, who takes care of things after hours. And um, do you like the office staff? Are they friendly? You know, when, when you come in and, um, you know, when your children come in, are they greeting them, you know, with a smile and, you know, not with a frown? So, and you should take note of that when you just make an appointment for a meet and greet, not necessarily for appointment and just observe and watch the body language and, and see how, you know, the office staff and the nurse, how they're interacting. Because that means a lot. It does mean a lot, especially when we are putting our children, our most precious yes. gifts in your hands. Yeah, into the doctor's hands, into the physician's hands. And yes. we're also not, we're putting our trust in you as well. Absolutely. I think that's some wise, valuable um, advice. Trina, how do you keep your um, energy level so high? And how do you stay so positive? Well, it's, I, I think it's, it's your daily routine. Mm -hmm. And my daily routine, I get up, first thing I do is I meditate. Okay. And I, that way I can clear my mind and start afresh on a, on a clean slate. Because oftentimes when you wake up, you have a thousand thoughts going through your mind. Mm -hmm. And what do you got to do? And, you know, all day long. So I said, okay, fine. Let me start off with a clean slate. And I like using the Insight Timer. It's a meditation app that helps me get focused right away. Because sometimes I will sit there, I'm like, okay, Trina, you got too many thoughts going here. It uses a gong instrument. And what it does, so it, it, the gong sound goes off, and then what I do is I inhale, and I'll help positive things like health, happiness, peace of mind, all the good things. And then I hold it, then when the next gong sound come, I release it and exhale. And I blow out negativity, stress, doubt, fear, anything that's negative, I, blow, I physically blow it out. And I do this for about five to 10 minutes and that gets my day started right. Then once I do that, I go invert on my inversion table that helps me with my back, my neck, just stretching me out. And once I finish with that, I go and do some dynamic warm up. Um, after my dynamic warm up, like, you know, marching in place, arm circles, just to get my blood flowing. Then I'll do 10 or 15 minutes of cardio and maybe a little 10 or 10 minutes of strength. Then I'm done for that time period. And, um, if I want to come back to it, I can later in the day. Like I said, it's all about being woven throughout the day. Right. After I finish the 15 minutes of workout, I prepare myself a antioxidant, laden um, smoothie, green smoothie. And I make sure that I use a variety of fruits and vegetables and not the same one. So for my greens, I rotate between collards, um, spinach, um, bok choy, chard. I use them all. And, you know, and the kicker is when you're making a smoothie, you want to make sure what makes it um, tasty is fresh pineapple. And um, fresh pineapple has a particular ingredient in it for, that I love because I have joint issues from gymnastics. It has bromelain and bromelain is really good for your joints. So I'll put some pineapple, maybe a date and some of my almond coconut milk. Then I'll put the turmeric, the ginger, the matcha green tea, like I mentioned in the book and whip it up. And then I know I'm starting my day right. I have put the right nutrients, the right phytochemicals, the right ammunition, and I've done my physical activity. So I, you know, ready to start my day. Yeah. And you've spe fed your spirit. Yes. Your mind and your body. And yes. then you're ready to start. And then you can handle anything. 
Yes, whatever comes your way. How do you balance it all? I mean, you're a mom, you're a physician, you work out, um, you have a husband, Carl, who's also a physician. Yes. So that's a busy lifestyle for both of you. So again, how have you handled all of that? And always, and you've served on boards, you're active in your community, you volunteer. So what can you tell our dreamers or what can you tell people, our viewers that are watching to make them aware that you do really have the time and to feel that you can enjoy the process of many things that you do. The many faces and the many hats you wear. Yes. The the key thing you mentioned it early, you journal. You have I my kids say, Mom, you're old fashioned, but I like writing down the old fashioned to-do list. What do I have to do? And I prioritize. And I definitely don't try to overload one day with too many activities. Mm. It has to be small. Again, we get back to the title of the book, digestible pieces. And um and that's the only way of doing it. Because if you try to do too much in once, then nothing really gets done effectively. Yeah. So I'd rather do a few things, you know, every day and do them well mm-hmm. than have too many things going on and nothing gets done well. So right. you just have to prioritize, write it down and put a timeline to it. Mm-hmm. You know, when I want to have this accomplished and then you have small wins. Okay, I finished this today. Mark it off. So it's all about writing it down and putting a timeline to it. Then, most importantly, I think, celebrate the win. Celebrate the win. Celebrate yourself. Yes. yes. And if you're having a problem, get an accountability partner sometime. That helps. Mm -hmm. You know, just to keep Mm -hmm. you on track. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, to me, that's that's helpful. But, you know, I I often find a lot of times um, perfectionism and procrastination can paralyze your potential. Okay, okay, you gotta say that again, because you know, here's another, that's a, (laughs) I'm catching that nugget, because that's another one that we have to share. Yes, people, I said procrastination. Yes. And perfectionism paralyzes potential, the four Ps. The four Ps. Yes. The four Ps. And you do not want to paralyze your potential. No. Perfectionism, procrastination paralyzes your potential. Yes, it does. Audit from Dr. Trina Wiggins and boop, (laughs) catch that. Catch that nugget. Listen, I'm going to write that down. Okay. I have affirmations all over the house, not just in my office. Yes. I have them on my mirror. I have them on my, in my kitchen, on my window, wherever you can look. Where, oh, absolutely. I mean, wherever me. you are, what's going to get your focus daily. Yes. Put that there. Yes. Put that there and remind yourself. What was one of your most challenging times in your life? I mean, where you thought, I don't know if I can get through this. And how did you overcome it? I would have to say, um, obviously, the issue with my dad, that was very challenging. And then also, when I um, was in um, college, you know, being a gymnast, you're very muscular, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure, you know, with, with, your, with your children. And back in the 80s, or in the, I guess, the late, mid to late 70s, it wasn't very popular it wasn't considered feminine. So I would always wear sleeves because I was embarrassed uh, um, to show my here arms. you are and with it, this beautiful body, yeah. But you know, back then, and then when you're dating, you know, that, that became very problematic and I, it, it, it bothered me a lot. Um, but fast forward, in 1993, the Tina Turner movie came out with Angela Bassett and when she came out in 93 and she was displaying her arms, that gave me permission right then and there. Hello, no more sleeves. I'm going to be <laughs> proud of who I am <laughs> and yes. accept my body the way it is. So, um, and then was everything comes full circle. In 2007, when I was competing in fitness, I had to do a fitness tribute to Tina Turner. And, and I still do her today. So that's just a story of, overcoming, I guess, just negative thoughts. 
um, that were just pervasive back in that time era. Um, now you see women sleeveless all the time and in the gym, but it just, that wasn't the thing back in the mid to late seventies. Right. And I think for me, what's even more valuable, um, is that you overcame your own thought. Yes. Never mind of what's happening on the outside. I yes. mean, there was an outside circumstance that inspired you to, or motivated you and encouraged you to change the thought. That's why I love doing Dreamers Unite, right? Because I right. hope to be that outside influence on even my own life, just learning from my guests, learning from the process of doing the show right. um, is important. But it really is internally that we are the ones who have to control, as I said to someone, the beast between the ears. Yes, um, yes. Because we have this internal warfare with ourselves. Yes, absolutely. And I failed to share one other experience. I, wanted, I know we're pushed for time, but I wanted to share it. Um, I don't know if you knew. So I had an injury. I guess we did talk about that, um, a knee injury in college, mm -hmm. ACL. And then um, I had another surgery after the boys were born. You know, when you have a problem with your ACL and you're pregnant, it changes your hormonal level. So anyway, holding one of the twins one day, I just kind of collapsed. So I found out my ACL was no longer there. Fast forward, um, during the fitness competition season, like in 2006, I sustained an ACL of the other leg. And I'm like, mm. oh my God, how can at age 47, can I come back from this? Because I still wanted to do what I do. So, um, and that was an obstacle. So what I did was I found a surgeon that was specific for knees and um, got a consultation. We set up a surgery date. I met with him and the physical therapist to write out a plan, a schedule, a timeline of when I should be making progress. So I have the surgery, get in with the physical therapist, we're making progress and I'm saying, well, Trina, how are you gonna keep up your endurance? You can't run, you can't jog, you can't bike. So I had to sit there and clear my mind of all those thoughts and said, and so I allow my mind to have creativity so I can brainstorm. And what I came up with, I bought a rowing machine and I looked across the way and I saw my kids skateboard. I said, hmm, I'm gonna put my bum leg on the skateboard and I'm gonna roll with one leg. I will be engaging my arms, my core, and that one leg, and the other leg would just go for the ride. Yes. And I was able to maintain my endurance by doing that and didn't miss a beat afterwards. And another thing people should probably also wanna do, find someone that you can look up to. Like mm -hmm. I, I looked at um, Tiger Woods and Tom Brady, both had an ACL injury, both came back. And Tom Brady came back to win two Super Bowls. And Tiger came back just as strong as he was before surgery. So I said, if they can do it, I could do it. The key was, you know, looking at your goal, your obstacle, writing it down, visualizing it, making a timeline and putting into action and go for it. And go for it and go. Well, and that's exactly why I'm doing the show. Because yes. I am exactly why, you know, I'm on my journey for creating and yes. my, um, Cherry Red Sweet Escape, yes. my television series, and I'm determined. The story, it's, it's my own personal story, my own yes. personal journey, but more importantly, it's to show that, hey, if I can do it, you can too. If exactly. I can have this dream, and it's a big dream of empowering people, of inspiring yes. um, people, inspiring women to use our voices, people who have a dream greater inside of themselves, but can't right. necessarily express it. It really is about modeling and saying, you know what, if I can do it, you can. And I yes. too have so many uh, wonderful people in my life and also people I don't know, but I know them in my head. Yes. They, and they still inspire me and right. they still inspire me. Right, right. And motivate me. So it's important that you get a mentor Yes. Um, whether it's someone you know, or you can find this program, Dreamers, yes. uh, books like Kiss. Yes. Um, and YouTube, just, it's a great place to go, really, 
for oh, content that can inspire you, to motivate you, to teach you. Um, and, you know, there's so much free information. You just have to be committed to getting out there and making up your mind that I want to do it. Like, I think once, like you said, once you made up your mind and you closed off that negative chatter to, yes. I can't do this, I can't do that, but what can I do? And then you started thinking creatively and outside of the box, yes. rowing machine, huh? Skateboard. Yeah. <laughs> I can do something. Exactly. I still have other moving parts. Exactly. So use what you have, dreamers. Use yes. what you have and not what you don't have. Exactly. Double boom. There's two nuggets. Yeah. I want you to complete the sentence. Yes. Before my journey ends on this planet, I want to have impacted as many people as I can to educate them about great nutrition and how to keep themselves healthy and fit and um, to spread my mother's legacy and you know her health and wellness to myself and to the, to the, to the masses because so many people don't know because what you don't know, you don't know. So I think it's, it's my responsibility um, to return. Like I said, you learn, you earn, return. And that's what I want to do right now in my life. And that is what you are doing. Yes. You are living your life out loud with no excuses. Yes. High five, my sister. Yes. Yes. High five. Trina, it's been an honor, a privilege, a pleasure. Um, what else can I say? I'm happy that we're family. Oh, absolutely. And it's, I love seeing you do wonderful things, getting people's message out. So that's, it's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. So kiss again, keep it short and simple for a healthy, sustainable lifestyle. Get your copy today. Dreamers, that is it for thank you. us. Yes. And thank you again, Dr. Trina Wiggins. Thank you for all of your wonderful nuggets and advice. And dreamers, if you haven't subscribed, Trina, tell them what to do. Subscribe now to Dreamers <laughs> Unite. That's right. Subscribe now to Dreamers Unite. Hit the blue bell for more uplifting, inspirational, encouraging, not just content, but really, I hope, tangible advice and hearing stories, again, that if they could do it, then I can too. Thank you, dreamers, for um, joining me, and I will see you again next time.